Can anything really cross the event horizon of a black hole? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yes. Because we see stuff going into yes. black holes. Yes. Well, no. We don't see them going in, right? We because as they're head we see them heading in, and I think this might be the essence of the question. We see them heading into the black hole, but if if it's a if they were emitting light as they they went in, we'd see that light getting stretched and stretched and stretched. So maybe start in yellow and begin to go to red and get darker and darker and darker. And eventually the wavelength, as far as we on Earth are far away from the black hole perceive it, it sort of freezes. And I think this is the essence of the question. We we never actually see it cross over. But if you are if you're the person that is heading towards that event horizon, actually you see nothing. You don't feel anything. That's the really weird thing about event horizon, especially of a big black star, which is very low curvature. As you pass over the event horizon, there isn't a little, there should be a little signal saying, you are like you're passing one county to another or one country to another. You are now entering the black hole. That you will pass through it straight through it and you won't feel it until you actually sort of quite a way into the black hole and then you'll begin to feel oh my word, there's something down there, singularity that's beginning to pull me, and then you'll get stretched. But yeah, things fall in. We know black holes grow in size. and uh, We have supermassive black holes right in the core of a galaxy. So this famous spaghettification that we all hear about, where you get stretched if you fall into a black hole, that happens after you've passed the event horizon. That's right, yeah. yeah. You, for, for, for really big black holes, supermassive black holes, it's quite a long, I think quite a long way in. It might not be a long time, but quite a, f a long way in compared to the where the event horizon is before the, 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 the tidal forces which that singularity begins to draw on you really begin to kick in. I think when you first pass in, you think, what's, what's the big question going on here? Assuming you've known that you've passed the horizon. You don't, you don't feel anything in particular as you go past. I think this question, I think it kind of... The problem with it, it kind of as, assumes like a, a universal time. Like there's a big clock in the sky I know, it, I know it tries to sort of not assume that, but I think in the back of its mind it is. Um, and I think what you've got to remember is when you're an observer falling into the black hole, you have your own clock, right? And that's what's important, and you do pass through the black hole. It is indeed true that the universe, you know, as a distance, will, 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 you'll see the whole history of the universe. And, and likewise, somebody watching you fall in will see... Um, you know, never actually sees you fall in because of the, 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 the way in which time slows down between the two observers, the difference at which the rate at which time ticks for the two observers. So, Brady, if I, if I watch you fall into a black hole, um, what will happen is that I will see your clock on your watch slow down and slow down and slow down until eventually it feels like you're sort of suspended in time on the, on the edge of the black hole. So you'll just see my last despairing look as I fall away forever. Exactly, but I never actually see you fall in. But what do you experience? You actually do, you don't see anything weird, right? If you're just looking forward at the black hole, your, your, you know, your clock is just ticking at a normal rate, you go through the event horizon, and until you start to approach the singularity, nothing weird happens, right? So there's not, no, if you, did look, if you look backwards, you would, as you approach the horizon. As see, I see you, what would I see? Yeah, I you, would, you would see the whole history of the universe, that is true. You would see me die, right you'd see you know generations pass and, and so on and so forth the whole history right now it becomes problematic when you start trying to resolve this on really really small time scales because then you don't really know what the physics is on those time scales but it, you know when you coarse grain over it i think there's there's no problem with this and it's indeed it's just a an effect of the different rates of time and i think that for you you have your time you're going to cross that event horizon no big deal you do cross it but I have a different perspective because I'm because I'm a different observer and I'm moving at a different rate and at different points in the gravitational field. And so I see I see your time slow down relative to me. But it's a purely relative effect. Will we ever develop powerful enough particle accelerators to create mini black holes? Okay. Of course, back in 2008. Oh. This was the concern, right? When they turned the LHC on at uh, 13, uh, at the time, I think it was 8 TV, was the, that uh, we would collide particles together, protons together at such a high energy that they would create a mini black hole that then would eat up the world. And I remember our girls who were at school, um, at junior school, having the teachers having to say, you may have heard about this, this isn't going to happen. And actually CERN had a, a 
put together a group of physicists. I remember Michelangelo Mangano, my friend and who's at CERN, headed it all where they produced a document explaining that you're not going to do this. And on, in the minuscule chance that you did, you'd create black holes which are so small that thanks to Hawking evaporation, they'd immediately decay. We're not likely to be able to build colliders that are going to get much more powerful than we have right now. They're talking about 100, I mean, this is 13 TV, that the 100 kilometer one will be will take us up by factors of two, three. The same properties of black holes will still be there. If you were to find them, then they'll decay almost immediately. So they're not going to cause us any problem. Of course, there are some quite interesting theories where in principle you could, these higher dimensional theories where you could form them. And that's what generated the interest in the first place. But the fact we've not seen any at the T at the LHC means those theories are now tightly constrained, so they're not likely to produce any. Don't panic, you say. Don't panic. Okay. Will we ever develop powerful enough particle accelerators to create mini black holes? Uh, I think it could happen. I, I think it's not impossible. Um, it's certainly true that, you know, we, th that we could be at the, at the edge of, of detectability on, on, on mini black holes at colliders. They, it requires certain things to be true of nature, and it requires that, you know, that we, that we live on some higher dimensional, on, on one of these sort of surfaces, these four dimensional surfaces in some higher dimensional space time, and that we're tricked into thinking the scale of quantum gravity is a bit lower than we, than we, already, than we currently think it is, and that makes it easier to produce these black holes. So that 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 could be the case if those things are true, and those are really you know interesting sort of theories. Um, then yeah, I mean we we could well be on the edge of, of detection. So you know, I say a hundred TeV collider, which is not impossible, could produce one of these. So yeah, I would say yes. But it's nothing to be worried about. It's nothing to be worried about, Brady. We've done a video on this. We did a video a long time ago. When, uh, we've done a video on everything, Tony. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, I would say not. No, I mean, look. So, so the black holes. That I mean, clues in the question, right? It says they're mini black holes. So a mini black hole, small black hole. That means it, it, the weird thing about black holes is they're not really as black as they seem. They give off a radiation, which is called Hawking radiation. It's when you apply quantum mechanics to a black hole. But the weird thing is, the smaller a black hole is, the hotter it is. So it's actually, it's not actually the big black holes are really cool. They barely give off any Hawking radiation. It's the small ones that give off a lot. So if you're at a collider, you're necessarily going to be producing small black holes because the process is a small process, right? And so they are going to be small black holes. Those are really, really hot. A really, really hot black hole is going to evaporate very, very quickly through Hawking radiation. It'll do so in a really distinctive way. It'll light up the, de the detector in the collider sort of equally in all directions and in a completely democratic way as well in the sense that it'll produce all types of particle. Right? It won't just produce one particular type. It'll, it'll be very democratic about it. And you start to see that, then you're like, yeah, I reckon that was a black hole. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, it is awesome. It's well awesome. I, I love the idea of the black holes at the LHC. What happens when an atom straddles the event horizon of a supermassive black hole? What happens if it straddles it? I'm, I'm, my guess is it falls in. <laughs> unless, you've, unless you have given it a kick, which allows it, it, you know, if it's moving close to the event horizon, but, but is somehow sort of just sh going past it, it, can, it could get away. But I think if it's straddling it, then the gravitational pull of the event horizon is just going to force it to, to come in. It's not, it's not going to do anything special on that. I guess, yeah, because I guess where that question is coming from is we all know that you can't pass back over an event horizon, yeah. Yeah. But, if, but if the atom's half in and half out, you know... It's going to go in, I think. I think it's going to go in. Okay. Um, yeah. In fact, you, I mean, there are, you, you can demonstrate that there are there's a set of trajectories that you have to be on in order to sort of skirt the event horizon and get away from it. It's got to be coming in with a certain velocity in order to do that. Oh, here, there was a second part to the question, sorry. The second part was, does it become instantly ionised even when the nucleus is on the outside of the event horizon because the nucleus can't feel the effect of electrons on the inside of the event horizon? Right. I, so I... I my, my gut feeling is it won't be because I think the gravitational field, I mean, it can only be ionized here by the gravity, by pull of gravity. There's no other electromagnetic forces interacting with it. So, and, the, and on the supermassive black holes, it's very weak. It's very weak. You, you barely feel it. So I don't think it will. 
ionize it. What happens when an atom straddles the event horizon of a supermassive black hole? Does it become instantly ionized even when the nucleus is on the outside of the event horizon because the nucleus can't feel the effect of electrons on the inside of the event horizon? I think it's going to get stretched. I mean, you have to. That's a difficult question to answer because you have to. It's an extended object, right? So you want to treat it as an extended object. So <coughs> we have to define what, by whose reference frame are we going to discuss it? Because if I. Okay, let me try to spin the question around a little bit. You're about to fall into a black hole, Brady, right? Um, and you're, the black hole horizon's just there, right? It's just in front of you, okay? So you reach out. Okay, what do you see? Right? Is it, do you just see your hand there? Like, no! Your hand is going to stretch. There's going to be a, a, a dilation effect, which is going to stretch your hand out all around the horizon. It's like it, everything just gets stretched. You won't see your hand like a hand. You see this stretched out weird hand thing, right? It's completely weird because, you know, so, so when, I when you talk about this particle straddling the horizon, it's not like you've got a part, you, you, you're, and you're looking at it, right? You're not going to see a little bit of particle and then just gets cut off. You're going to see some weird distortion thing going on, and the part, part of the particle that's closest to the horizon is going to be stretched all around it. And then, of course, that effect is sort of decreases as you, as you move away. So it's, it's really weird. That, that's what I'm seeing with my eyes. That's not what's actually happening to my hand. So what's actually happening to the atom? Does the, I mean, I guess they're saying, does the atom get destroyed crossing an event horizon? Because part of it has to cross before the other part. Well, I guess... Uh, I wouldn't say it's destroyed, no. Um, because if it's far from the... Um, if, it's a, if it's a large black hole, let's say it's a large black hole, okay, then um, there's nothing unusual about the gravitational field at the event horizon. Absolutely nothing. It's just a gentle gravitational field there, there'll be not there's nothing like the gravitational forces to rip rip that atom apart or anything like that it's just an opt it's just like a, a a thing about the sort of time scales and the, and the length contraction and time dilation which is perfectly fine that, that you would see right but in terms of the part it's not being ripped apart or anything like that absolutely not are we inside a black hole now and if so how would we test for that i just thought we weren't and because um, you told me if we pass over an event horizon, we might not know it. Yeah, I think passing over event horizon, we might not know it. Could we not be in like some mega black hole? Yeah, um, there there are papers that I have read which do do say this. Yeah, so it's so so huge that we are a small island within it, and so we're not yet feeling the singularity. I don't know. I don't know how to test. I mean, if, if, we could, if we could somehow get some feel for our overall flow compared to the, the space in which we live. I mean, the, we are flowing in, the, in terms of we, we are on Earth. If you, we're moving in a given direction within um, the universe. And people say that's because there's potentially some very large mass structures there that, that are, are called great attractor, in fact, that's, that's causing us to, to flow. But no one ever thinks of that as being a flow in a black hole. I guess if we really were in a black hole, we would be heading towards a singularity and we would begin to see how slowly but surely things get elongated. <laughs> and that might be a test. If you could test it all the way around everything and see if gradually over many millennia that things begin to get elongated. That might be a, a test. Yeah, otherwise I don't know. Are we inside a black hole? And how would you test it? So, I don't think we can know. I think it's possible that if we're in a giant, giant, truly ginormous black hole, which is larger than the size of our cosmic horizon, we have no way of knowing, and I don't think we've got any way of testing it either. So doesn't that mean there's some kick-ass singularity somewhere, if the event horizon's that big? Right, I guess it would, um, which sounds a bit alarming, but I would, yeah, okay, now I'm bothered, uh, because I don't want that to be, I don't want to be, it to be naked relative to us, right, that sounds bad, although it's a time, that would be a, a, 
<laughs> what do you mean naked relative to us? So I'd, uh, the idea of a naked singularity is, is a bad one, right? I mean, you, you can't make any predictions if you're exposed to a naked singularity. But of course, that's a, that depends on the nature of the singularity. If the singularity is a singularity in time, it's an end of time, which actually, depending on the nature of the black hole, it could well be. So if we're talking about, um, yeah, Schwarzschild black hole, it's an end of time. So it's a future singularity. Um, so it's not like it's just lurking there. It's lurking in the future, not 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 um, in space. This sounds freaky. I still don't know what naked means, but so naked singularity. So 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 you want the. Yeah, this is why people talk about horizons, or one of the reasons people like to talk about horizons, because the idea is is that if there's a black hole, let's just, let's not talk about us living in one now. Let's just imagine there's a black hole. So a black hole, yeah, indeed, it contains a singularity, or some. Okay, we might not really be a singularity. In fact, it's probably not really a singularity. It's probably something resolving it. But let's, there's some weird place inside that black hole. If if that singularity is shielded by an event horizon, then we're kind of the physics outside of the event horizon is protected from it. it we can't be influenced by it. If it's not, if we have a naked singularity, so we don't have an event horizon, so we, we or we're inside the event horizon. Well, again, then it depends. It might just be in the future, then, if it, rather than spatial. But but let's think about. Let's imagine we're exposed to a spatial singularity, right? So it's a singularity in space, and we're exposed to it. There's nothing protecting us from it. Then we really have no control, physics-wise, of what is coming, going in or out of that singularity. It's it's a divergent point in in space, right? It, it's completely. So we have. So so we can't say anything about the evolution of the universe, right? Because because anything could come out of that guy there could be elephants coming out of it there could be donald trump coming out of it there could, there could be anything right we, we we don't know because we cannot control the equations there so you lose all control of the physics the minute you have a naked singularity so they're bad right if we're talking about one in the future it's kind of you know that that's that's different but a spatial singularity is just sitting there no 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 that's we, we need we need a horizon protecting us from it otherwise we're screwed we can't do physics so if we're living inside a black hole all physics could be wrong. No, because I would think the kind of thing you're imagining is probably a future event or a future singularity. So I'm not sure that's necessarily problematic um, in the same way. You know, the disruption it would cause, the expense it would cause. And uh, they did a lot of research. You know, it wasn't that the, the, the ring which uh, was built, you know, it's just opened in 2009, was, was built devised in 2008. Back in the 1980s, people began to talk about it. We're building all this sort of, this great big kit, and yeah, we're, we're making these, um, these protons, sort of giving them the energy of a mosquito. 